Ignat Moikano versus Raphael Fiziev. We got minus 145 on Fiziev and plus 125 on Hanat Moikano. And let's start off with Moikano, who's been on a bit of a roller coaster run in the UFC. So uh, he uh, he accrued his first loss against Brian Ortega in a fight where he was pretty much piecing him up the entire fight, then gets caught in a, a guillotine choke in round three. Uh, pretty much the story of Brian Ortega's up and coming uh, nature in the UFC is just always being behind uh, and then eventually locking up a submission. Uh, so it can't really fault Hanato Moicano there. Um, goes out there and beats Calvin Cater as well as Cub Swanson, finishes him in the first round, and then gets a big, big step up in Jose Aldo. Uh, and we see Aldo. Uh, uh, finish him in the second round after having a very still made his first round we saw Moicano kind of just gauging his distance landing a couple leg kicks getting a couple combinations off but not really anything uh uh too crazy there and then in the Chancellor Young fight really did not get to get going we saw Young land a beautiful overhand right and then eventually ground and pound not to Moicano there uh and then leading up to that uh, or sorry after that Roughly about uh, nine months later, he comes back and fights Demir Hadzovic in the event pretty much before the COVID shutdown. Uh, yeah, I believe he dropped him or he got the takedown. I'm trying to remember. But uh, he did it, lock up a rear naked choke after that. Uh, there was a little beef afterwards as well. And that's why Connor was just fired up. You know, not many people in the crowd. So that made him kind of uneasy uh, as well as, you know, him just having a kid and him wanting to fight a little bit longer. That's when we had that infamous exchange where, uh, you know, Mike Connor's like, I want to fight more. And Demir, Demir's like, you shouldn't have tapped me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have submitted me. And so uh, very uh, fun and uh, interesting uh, exchange there between the two guys. But at least McConnell's back on the winning track, and now he's trying to tie together two wins here. Unfortunately, he has a very, very tough test in front of him with Rafael Fiziev, who... Uh, seems to be the real deal so we know what Moicano's game is he has a solid jiu-jitsu background uh but his uh striking is pretty much where he's done the brunt of his work uh like again in that Cub Swanson fight drops him with a beautifully placed and timed jab and then follows up with a rear naked choke um the the Calvin Cater fight you know goes out there and outstrikes Cater as well too um, he seems to do solid work from there. Uh, but now that he's fighting a guy like Rafael Fiziev, who is the kickboxing coach at Tiger Muay Thai, that should tell you as much as you need to know about this guy. And his, uh, his standup is nasty. His overall game is really starting to come together as well, too. Um, I believe it's George Hickman is the name of the head coach over there at, uh, head MMA coach over there at Tiger Muay Thai. And he's doing a really good job with a lot of these opponents or a lot of these fighters. Uh, one of them that really comes to my mind right off the bat is Loma Lukbunmi, who looked great last time around. Uh, but they're doing a lot of good work with Rafael Fiziev. Now, a lot of people were going out there and kind of just writing off. Rafael Fiziev, after he lost to Magomed Mustafaev back in April of 2019, uh, he got caught with a spinning back kick, and then uh, Magomed, you know, followed up with some punches. Now, Fiziev wasn't completely out. It was more so of a flash knockout, if anything. Uh, so it was more of a TKO than actually being put out. So I'm not trying to go out there and be like, okay, this guy is chinny. I do think he has some good durability. But in the next two fights against Alex White and Mark D. Casey, we truly saw what this guy is capable of. You know, solid takedown defense, good takedowns of his own, good top control, good top pressure, good ground and pound. But obviously his bread and butter being the kickboxing. Uh, very, very nasty with his leg kicks, his body kicks, um, kicks in general. The guy kicks like a, a freaking madman. Uh, and his hands are great too. The guy throws in combinations. He's very active. His cardio looks good too. Um, he seems like could be he could be a problem if he really starts to uh, get active and and start you know racking up these names now to get Hanato Moikano is a solid step up from Mark Casey and a good way to assert himself within this division and I think he's very live to get a victory here. Um, we know now it comes down to how good Fiziev's takedown defense is as I believe that Moikano will have the advantage there if Moikano is successful in getting this fight to the ground I think he can make things a little bit hairy with that jiu-jitsu but Fiziev looks very very strong like it's insane how strong that guy looks um 
I think he should be able to keep this fight on the feet. And I think that's where uh, the, the difference will be. Once this fight is on the feet, I think the leg kicks of Fiziev will really start to pay dividends. One thing that we see in that Mark D. Casey fight is near the ending of it, they put up a graphic of like the distribution of strikes from Fiziev, and the guy does not discriminate at all. Like it was 20 to the head, 20 to the body, 20 to the legs. Like the guy just mixes it up so well that it just continues to make his opponent think and, and is on edge and... and it kind of gets them irritated as well, too. Now, I think if he's able to go out there and continuously do that against Moicano, he could absolutely stifle him and, and really uh, kind of make him shoot de- desperation shots, which are a lot, which are a lot easier to uh, stuff as a, as the defenders. So I think that Fiziev might have him beat here all all around. Uh, my issue here, though, is I, I I feel like people are, are, you know, succumbing to a little bit of recency bias with Moicano, hence the line, you know, being the way it is. I think it should be a little bit more of a pick em fight. Let's not forget, before the Aldo and Chan Sung Jung fights, Hanato Moicano was seen as this guy that was going to be the next big thing. You know what I mean? He was going out there and disposing of his opponents outside of the Brian Ortega fight, and even being a guy in Calvin Cater who... You know, a lot of people are high on at this point in time who's even main eventing against Max Holloway in the new year. You know what I mean? So I think we need to step back a little bit in terms of writing Moikano off right away. Um, He's 31 years old. He's still in his prime. Fiziev is 27, so he's still, like, getting up there uh, and getting closer and closer to his uh, prime. But truly, I think this is a fight that I'm going to stay away from. I do think that Fiziev is the better fighter. I think that he has a ton more potential, and I think he's going to win this fight too. But I would have, I would rather have a much better line. Like I was hoping for maybe minus one twenty, minus one fifteen, even a pick 'em odd uh, odds for Fiziev here. I think there is recency bias baked into the line, which is why it's just moving as much as it is. But uh, I do pick Fiziev to win still in terms of betting. I'll probably end up passing, and it might bite me in the butt as I think that, you know, Fiziev is is definitely a good spot here. Uh, will I have him in a couple of DJ parlays? Probably. So don't be uh, don't be too surprised if that's what you see. But uh, I do think Fiziev has a ton of talent, but I do want to m- pump my brakes a little bit in terms of fading Moicano here, considering that he's, you know, one and three in his last... Uh, or sorry, one and two in his last three fights. And again, two of them being two solid opponents in Jose Aldo and Chan Sung Jung, even though uh, Korean Zombie just got outstruck for five rounds by Brian Ortega, I still think that uh, that's not a bad loss considering how much power the Korean Zombie carries as well too. And that fight didn't even go a full minute. Had that fight played a little bit longer, who knows what Moicano would have looked like. So uh, I, personally, I want to stay away from the fight due to possible recency bias here. Uh, I don't feel comfortable betting on Moicano, though, because I am high on Fiziev, but I still want to see what he still has left to uh, kind of offer to the game. And this is a good test for him because Fiziev is a, is a guy on the rise, and Moicano could definitely assert himself back into the division with the big win here. So uh, I'll still take Fiziev to win this fight via decision, uh, but I, I'm keeping my eye on Moicano. You know, I, I think he still could potentially be live, but I'll go with Fiziev to win this fight via decision.